Hello everyone and welcome to the seventh lecture for our course Irrigation Engineering and Hydraulic Structures. In today's lecture, lecture number seven, we are going to start the design capacity of irrigation canals, right? So before before going into the uh, problem solving section of design capacity and before going into the depth of design capacity of irrigation canals, we need to first discuss some important terms related to the design capacity. So the first and most important thing we need to know is that what is design capacity? What is design capacity? Okay. As we know that capacity means the word capacity means maximum, right? Capacity means maximum requirement. Maximum requirement of anything is known as the capacity. So, here we are uh, discussing about the irrigation canals, right? So, the maximum requirement of water to be flown through the irrigation canal on the basis of which we actually design our canal is known as design capacity. So, there are a few important points you need to note down. The first point is that design capacity is required because we need to know the requirement of water for the crop. Right? What is the need of design capacity? Why do we need design capacity? We need design capacity because we need to first, the first and most important thing we need to know is the requirement of water for the crop. How much water is required for the crop? When we come to know about the requirement of the water for the crop, then we can design our canal on the basis of the requirement of the water, right? So the maximum requirement is known as design capacity of that canal. And the second point is the design of canal will depend on the capacity of canal. Again, it's the same thing that the capacity of what is going to be the capacity or maximum requirement of any canal. It will depend upon the requirement of your water, requirement of water for the crop. And similarly, the capacity of canal will depend upon the canal. C -A -N -A -L. Canal will depend upon the requirement of water for the crop. So, we need to find the design capacity first. The first important thing is that we need to find out the design capacity before designing any canal. So, before uh, solving some important numericals related to design capacity, we need to discuss some important terms. So, uh, the first term we are going to discuss is known as command area or we also call it gross command area and we represent it with GCA gross command area or CA command area. right? So here is an example that we have considered a town, small town which is cons uh, consist which consists of a road, right? Here is a school, and here is a park. Here is some sort of uh, industry, okay? Industry and here is a construction site right and this is some sort of any residential or commercial building in the town so as you can see that here on the road in the park in the school in the industry construction site building here we cannot do the uh, uh, cultivation right so such areas as you can see here a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 in this figure are known as non cultivable areas here you can't do cultivation right or you can name uh, there is another name for this term non culturable areas or non cultivable areas so other than these areas in remaining part you can do the 
cultivation so this remaining part is known as cultivable area because you can do the cultivation here okay so the remaining area other than a1 to a6 are cultivable area or culturable area so our main term is command area right so how you can define command area command area can be defined as the combination of both areas which are non cultivable area and cultivable area so we can define command area of any region as the combination of cultivable and non cultivable area it is also known as gross command area so mathematically you can write gross command area is equal to the sum of cultivable command area or you can write it as this to cultivable command area can be written as cca cultivable command area plus uncultivable command area so here gca is the gross command area which will be equal to cultivable command area plus uncultivable command area this is the mathematical form for the command command area or gross command area the second term is cultivable or culturable command area we have already discussed so what is cultivable or culturable command area it is a part of gross command area which can be cultivated right so what is going to the, uh, going to be the mathematical form of cultivable com uh, command area obviously you can uh, take it from here if you want to find out cultivable command area obviously this will go to the other side and it will subtract from the gross command area right so it is derived from here so your cultivable command area will be equal to your gross command area minus uncultivable command area then you will get cultivable command area if you want this area in the form of percentage then percentage can cultivable command area is going to be equal to cultivable command area divided by gross command area multiplied by 100 got it so you can uh, you can get the cultivable command area in the form of percentage by using this mathematical form and another important point you need to uh, remember is that if the cultivable command area is given to you then it's okay but if it is not given to you if the cultivable command area is not given to you then you can consider cult uh, cultivable command area as 80 percent of the gross command area right if it is not given you can uh, assume or consider the cultivable command area is 80 percent of the gross command area and the next term our third term is intensity of irrigation we represent it as i o i both i's are capital o is small i o i so i o i is defined as intensity of irrigation is defined as the percentage of cultivable command area let's try to understand it first let's say this is an area cultivable command area this whole area can be cultivated but as we know that we do not cultivate the whole whole area at the same time right like uh, in the first part of the year if you are growing some crops in these two parts then at that time we will we will not grow anything in these two parts and in the next season we will use the, these two parts of the land for cultivation so at the same time we are not going to uh, do the cultivation in all these four fields although they are all cultivable uh, all included in the cultivable command area but we will not cultivate all those uh, four fields at the same time what's the reason the reason is that if you do the cultivation in all these fields at the same time you can face the problem of water logging salinity in the soil and other uh, crop diseases too right so that's the reason so let's say this is the whole command area right and i am just cultivating these two fields that means that this is around 50% of cultivable command area right so 
this 50 percent the, uh, the land which is cultivated is actually the intensity of irrigation is known as intensity of the irrigation are you getting me let's read it out the definition you will come to know what actually intensity of irrigation is intensity of irrigation is defined as the percentage of cultivable command area which is actually irrigated right in this case in season one in season one only this black part is irrigated that means that only actually we can irrigate the whole area but actually we irrigated just 50 percent in season one so the intensity of the irrigation will be 50 percent here in season two we will irrigate the other two parts and we will not irrigate the first two parts so again that will be 50 percent because uh, we know that there are different uh, seasons for the crops right like rabi kharib season rabi season so if you are um, cultivating rabi crops at the, at the same time you cannot cultivate the kharib crops so this is another reason so because we know that the crops are usually irrigated in different se um, sessions in one year right in the first part of the year if you are irrigating something then in the second part you are irrigating the other crop on the basis of the crop type either it is rabi or kharib so the entire cultivable command area is not to be proposed for irrigation as we have discussed in a particular se uh, session because that can lead to the problem of water logging salinity in soil and other diseases right so this type of intensity of irrigation is known as seasonal intensity of irrigation so if you are doing it on the basis of seasons then you can call intensity of irrigation as seasonal intensity of irrigation okay so uh, the important point here you need to remember is that intensity of irrigation for, uh, for seasonal intensity of irrigation is always less than one and annual intensity of irrigation will be always greater than zero so you can get these points uh, in any sort of exam or multiple choice questions or interview questions so the formula we got for intensity of irrigation is that intensity of irrigation will be equal to area to be irrigated in that season divided by the total command uh, total cultivate uh, sorry cultivable command area multiply by 100 as you can see in this image what we are going to do to find out the intensity of irrigation we are going to uh, divide the area like for season one if we are finding the intensity of irrigation we will divide the area these two areas some of these two areas divided by the cultivable command area then multiply by 100 this is what this equation is showing so mathematically you can write intensity of irrigation as area to be irrigated in that season divided by cultivable command area multiply by 100 okay and the next term is area to be irrigated i think its name is actually showing the important thing is the mathematical uh, mathematical formula so the area to be irrigated is in a particular season session and it is calculated by multiplying seasonal intensity of irrigation with cultivable command area as i already we have find out the ioi right intensity of irrigation if you multiply this intensity of irrigation with the cultivable command area then you are going to get the area to be irrigated okay and you can find it from here too area to be irrigated can be find out by multiplying this will go here and it will multiply with ioi right so area to be irrigated will be equal to cultivable command area multiplied by ioi the next term is time factor what is time factor time factor it is the ratio of actual operating period of the canal to the base period of canal okay actual operating period actual operating period means the time in which actually the canal is being operating is the actual operating period and what is the base period we will discuss it later but let me show you base period the time period from first watering of crop during its sowing to the last watering of the crop so the time period between the very first water which we give to the crop to the last water which we give to the crop before its harvesting is known as the base period right so it is mentioned in the days its unit is in days so so time factor is actually the ratio 
between the actual operating period of the canal divided by the base period of crop multiplied by 100 that is time factor so canal is operated for certain period of time of crop to avoid harmful effects okay why do we actually operate canal for a certain period of time if we do not operate it for a certain period of time and we if we operate it for 24 7 then what is going to happen it will reduce the storage if you are damn right and due to seepages you can face the problem of water logging and if there is water logging obviously we are going to face the health issues because water logging is going to cause uh, because of water logging there will be mosquitoes and which can bring different uh, diseases and we can face the health issues so generally we consider canal operating period as greater than base period of the crop got it so the operating period of canal will always be less than your base period of the crop so the time factor will always less than one the next term is capacity factor what is capacity factor it is the ratio of your normal or seasonal average discharge in a canal to the peak or design discharge in a canal so it is the ratio of discharge but which two, two discharges average seasonal discharge to the uh, peak discharge or design discharge because uh, uh, we know that we usually design the canal on the basis of the peak discharge so, so you can call it either peak discharge or you can also call it design discharge in a canal in a specific period of time so uh, cp it's not cp it's cf it's cf it's not cp it's cf right capacity factor is equal to q seasonal divided by q design q is discharge cf is the capacity factor got it these are actually very important terms when you when we move forward to our course we are going to use these all terms and these are mathematical expressions in our numerical problems so the next term we got is the full supply coefficient or we also called is called it as duty on capacity full supply coefficient or duty on capacity what is duty on capacity when canal is running on full capacity like we have designed some canal on the basis of its peak capacity or maximum requirement right if that canal is being running on its full capacity its design capacity or peak capacity in that condition how much area it can irrigate the that area is known as duty on capacity okay got it so when canal is running on full capacity in that condition how much area it can irrigate is known as duty on capacity or full supply coefficient so mathematically we can express the duty on capacity or full supply capacity as area to be irrigated during base period divided by the design capacity of canal that is a divided by q design got it the next term is crop period what is crop period and base period usually you will find, get this question to differentiate between crop period and base period so crop period is actually the time period from the sowing of crop to the intent of its harvesting is known as crop period and its unit is in days let me give you an example like this is the field light right in this field the first thing I will do is I will put the seeds okay for the sowing of the crops sowing of crops right this is the first step so after some time right after sowing of the crops I am not going to give the water right after some time the first step is sowing after that the second step i am going to give the give water to the field right so the time period between the instant when you 
do the sowing of the crop to the end period when that crop becomes ripe and you will harvest okay when you will do the harvesting of the crop so the period between these two activities is known as crop period and what is base period base period is depend dependent on the watering the time period from first watering of crop during its sowing to the last watering of the crop before its harvesting see now it there is a uh, little bit of difference you need to remember that in crop period the period is from sowing to harvesting right but in base period the time period between the first watering it will start from here right to the last watering before harvesting it will be uh, somewhere here right if you consider this uh, this line as the timeline then before harvesting before uh, doing the harvesting maybe before one week or 10 days you will do the last watering right so there is a 10 days gap and right after the sowing of crop after giving some uh, break then you will do the first watering right first watering so what you can notice from here you can you can see that the uh, crop period is from here to here right as compared to crop period the base period is shorter got it so you can say that the crop period is always greater than base period crop period is going to be greater this is crop period right from here from sowing to harvesting and what is the base period base, base period is from the first water you give after sowing to the last water you give before harvesting so this base period is shorter as compared to crop period so this is the important point you need to remember many times in various exams multiple choice questions we used to get this uh, point either the crop period is greater than base period or base period is greater than the crop period so this is the reason that the crop period is greater than the base period the next term we got is delta okay delta we can uh, what is the uh, how we can denote delta delta can be um, right again uh, written as let me take the black marker this is the symbol to show delta so what is delta delta is the total depth of water required by a particular crop to attain its maturity right let's say i have a crop here and the uh, this crop let's say requires water to be filled up till this level let's say this is 10 cm right this depth is going to be delta but this is the only one depth we are told here that delta is going to be the total depth total depth of water so what actually the total depth means for that let's consider an example that will uh, clarify this term total depth let's say if we have a rice field if rice that rice requires about 10 cm depth of water like 10 cm of depth of water is required for uh, that rice uh, at an average interval of 10 days after every 10 days we need to give 10 cm depth water to this rice right and the crop period of the rice is 120 days sorry it's not uh, 120 120 days what is delta so we are asked to find out the delta so let's see what we have we are given crop period is given which is shown by b there is 120 days interval of watering 10 days okay after every 10 days we need to give 10 cm water to this rice so 
the number of intervals demanding demanded by the crops are going to be obviously we have total 120 days and the uh, interval of watering 10 days after every 10 days we need to uh, give water to the rice for till 120 days so we are going to have 12 intervals of 10 days each right after every 10 days so total intervals will be 12 so each interval for each interval we need to give water of 10 centimeter to the rice right so if we are giving 10 centimeter water to the rice for only one interval then what is going to be the total depth for 12 intervals it is going to be 10 multiplied by 12 obviously so this 120 centimeter is your delta this is delta okay so that's why we wrote here total depth we didn't wrote only depth the total depth of the water required for a particular crop is actually uh, known as delta okay so the unit of delta is going to be in centimeters i hope you understand what actually delta means the next term is duty so duty can be represented uh, i guess it is represented as d yeah yep you can represent duty as uh let's take it like color d duty is represented with d so duty is defined as the number of hectares of land actually it is uh, uh, related to area so its unit is going to be hectares so duty is defined as the number of hectares of the land that is irrigated for complete growth of crop by supplying one meter cube per second of water continuously throughout the crop or base period of respective crop is known as duty of the crop got it if you are continuously providing water till the uh, growth or maturity of the crop and the supply should be one meter cube per second then the area which is being uh, irrigated during irrigated the total area which is being irrigated is known as the duty so the unit of uh, the duty is going to be in hectares and the relationship what is uh, the relationship between delta and duty if you are asked to give the relationship between delta and duty in mathematical form how we can write it so the relationship between as we know that delta is represented by uh, this right so delta is going to be equal to uh, i guess 8 yeah 8.64 multiply by b b what was b b is the base period multiply by base period then divide it by d what is d d is the delta right so sorry d is the duty this is delta in centimeters and b is base period or you can call it crop period okay and what is d d is the duty of water and duty of water in hectares per 
cumic because uh, because we have defined here that it is the area which is irrigated in one meter cube per second right in one cumic so that's why the uh, unit of duty is going to be hectares per cumic so this is also important point you need to remember the unit of the duty this is base period base period unit will be in days and delta is going to be in centimeters so that's it these were few important terms which we were supposed to discuss before going into the numerical section of the design capacity of irrigation canals so that's it we will wind up uh, lecture number seven here and in next lecture lecture number eight we will uh, solve some numerical problems based on these terms which we have discussed in today's lecture so for now goodbye see you guys in next video